I was glad to frankly join the now, you know, more than uh, 6 million people in Michigan who've gotten a vaccine dose. And so uh, this has been something that's been really important to me. You know, my wife as an education worker has been fully vaccinated for a few months now. And I think this is the, the choice that everyone needs to make. So I got an appointment. I went to a community site in the city of Detroit. Uh, and this was really about showing that there's so many different ways to get a vaccine, whether it's you go to a pharmacy, you go to a community site, like I went to a church. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers because we know we have some disparities, especially when it comes to the city of Detroit. I think some of the latest numbers said about 26% of the population of the city, ages 16 and up, have had at least one dose of a, of a vaccine, and that's compared to the rest of the state, which is about 44%. Do you think it is hesitancy that we're seeing the difference in these numbers, or is it access at this point? Well, we have a lot of work to do, first of all, so let me say that. And the truth is, we need to address both of these challenges. You know, the fact that um, people have had questions or, or issues with vaccines in general or with the COVID-19 vaccine specifically, like that's why we established the Protect Michigan Commission, which I chair to try to get all that information and those resources out in a credible way. And we still are going to continue to invest in that work as a state. And then with access, I think city leaders, I think leaders across the state are doing everything they can to break down those barriers to access. And we still have work to do there as well. So that's one of the reasons why I went to a community site, because I wanted to demonstrate, you know, that this was a place that was pretty accessible, a, a neighborhood anchor, frankly, that people are used to going to. And I was proud to see, you know, frankly, a church full of Black folks getting vaccinated on Saturday. And I, and I think that's the kind of thing that we're going to need to continue to press access on to make sure that Detroiters can get vaccinated and that Michiganders can get vaccinated. Because I'm still hearing stories that it's complicated for a lot of people. Either they're, they're getting online or they have to try multiple times or they have to go to different sites at different times and that it is not that easy of a process. What are some of the people telling you, like when you were at the community site at a church, um, about what people's experiences have been and then what they're telling other people? Because again, spreading things by word of mouth or saying, look, this was my story. It wasn't so bad and this is how I can help you. Yeah, one of the things that's been important is, again, as vaccine supply has increased, we've been able to increase the availability of walk-in appointments at places. Because you're right, some people have had challenges navigating you know, online systems or even text message-based systems. Being able to walk in and get a vaccine dose is really the most optimal format for that for a lot of people. And seeing that coming online in cities like Detroit and other cities across the state, again, I think is an important step forward in making sure that we are making the vaccine as accessible as possible. And we've shifted that infrastructure now to provide mobile vaccine units to communities across the state of Michigan, and particularly in Southeast Michigan, where we have vans full of vaccines driving to places in communities, whether it's driving to a sports field, driving to a recreation center, driving to a church, and also being able to vaccinate people that way. So that kind of flexibility is going to be really critical as making sure that vaccine can meet people where they are. What are some of the conversations that are happening uh, between the mayor and, uh, and the governor's office? You know, so we're, we're in communication with, with the mayor's office as well as with the, you know, the municipal leaders across the state on pretty much a daily basis. I mean, they, you know, we're working together to make sure people can get what they need. And so in the city of Detroit, certainly, uh, they've been pretty aggressive in terms of, again, the types of availability that's been made possible for Detroiters, whether it's walk-in clinics, mobile sites, churches. There were, there were sites at high schools in the past week or so. And so I think they're, they're just wanting to make sure that they have all the tools that they need, and we're going to make sure that they get them. Um, how important is it, I guess, to see example, um, to have community leaders come out and, and share their stories of vaccination and help people navigate that? I think that this is one of the most important things. What I've been hearing since the vaccines became available back in December is that people wanted to see not only people who look like them, but people who they know get vaccinated. And so as we ramp up the number of people who are getting vaccines and from communities across the state, I think it's going to help because people will see someone they know and they love and they trust who has made this choice and who's doing okay. So, you know, I got my vaccine. My arm was a little sore for the rest of that evening, but I'm good. And as a young, you know, 38 year old black man who's relatively healthy, uh, I thought it was important to do that publicly uh, so that other people who are my peers um, or also family members of my peers could, could see that and make that similar choice. We're talking about the importance of vaccinations, but people are saying Michigan has the highest rates of COVID now in the country. Why aren't we shutting it down? Why aren't we going back and saying, gosh, we've got to take a two week pause. We're going to halt everything. Your administration has taken a lot of heat for not doing that in the past month. You know, we've asked for people to pause a lot of activity. We've asked for people to not dine indoors. We've asked for uh, indoor sports, for example, 
to take a pause. We've asked for people to, you know, quarantine after coming back, if they've taken a vacation or a spring break trip. And so we, we hope that people in Michigan will step up and do the right thing. The truth is, we're in a different position than we were in 2020. The question is why? Why are we in a different position right now? And unfortunately, it's because of the politicization, frankly, of the pandemic and the response to the pandemic. We have many fewer tools available to us because the Republicans fought us tooth and nail and frankly took us to court to take away some of those tools that were available to us. And so we're trying to work with what we have it at our disposal and also ask people to, to look at the knowledge that we've and the experiences that we've had over the last year. We know what works. We know masking works. We know being careful in, with indoor gatherings works. And so if we do that, these are things that can help us along with ramping up vaccines to get through not only this increase in cases, but ultimately in the pandemic, which we can do on our terms. We have the capacity and the knowledge to do that. We just need every Michigander to step up and play their part.